The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the new media factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi! Hello! Yeah. Hi, everybody! Hi. Hi, guys! Welcome to the Girls of 28A. I'm Julia Snigowski. I'm Trisha Santanera. And I'm Bianca Valerio. And today we have a very, very special host with us. We have Kat Alano here. Hi guys. She is a host, she is a singer, she's a songwriter, she is an artist, and you guys might remember her from her MTV VJ days. Yes. So Kat, tell us what you've been up to lately. Um, what have I been up to lately? Well, apart from starting my own podcast show, actually as well, on Tuesdays with Bassi Artari and Sib Cibolo, which is called That Show. It's at 7 p.m. on a Tuesday on the same network as this show. I have also uh, been working on my music. I am also a singer and songwriter, which people don't really know that about me that much. And she's amazing, actually. We've heard it. I, I love her stuff. Thank you. And uh, the other day we released our first single. Our band is called Decibel PH. Well, no, Decibel, but then the Twitter name is Decibel PH if you want to find us. That's Decibel with an L-E at the end, like pretty music. <laughs> nice. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. Okay, you're so formal, Kat. But then again, you know, our, our topic of discussion today it's a little more sensitive. I know, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so obviously we four girls have got something in common, and that is the vagina, right? So today we're going to be discussing something really quite the V, the V, v right? Exactly. Oh, okay. So not W. It's a V. That's a big one. Yeah. Unless so today we w are talking down. about <laughs> vaginal enhancement. You know, or labiaplasty. Um, basically, the reason why we want to discuss this is, you know, in the same way that um, a lot of women feel like they need to enhance themselves with plastic surgery, they also resort to that in the vaginal area as well. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be discussing all the different types of procedures. What are the pros, the cons, and if guys really do care, right, ladies? So why don't we get started? Diagrams. Diagrams. We're there. Ooh, now we have a huge vagina. Awesome! <laughs> okay, wow. So Julia, what, what do we see here? Okay, well, pretty much you see the before and you have the after. And um, so real quickly, the, the reason why we're talking about vagina plastics is because its popularity is growing at an exponential and pretty rapid rate. Like we. It's not a regulated subfield yet. Yeah. So we don't have the numbers of how many people are doing it in America, but in England on the NHS, it's already quintupled five times mm -hmm. in the past five years. Wait a minute, are you allowed to have this operation on the NHS? Yes, believe it or not. And so we don't even know the private numbers. So it's, no. it's growing. And the reason is, look, if you look at the vagina on the right, which is the after, and the vagina on the left, which is the before, I guess that is the perfect vagina and that's what every woman, or not every woman, women who are getting this procedure, mm -hmm. they will think that their vaginas are they supposed to look the like the one on the vagina. right. Yes. yes. And that is pretty close to the Barbie That's procedure. Barbie. Yes. Yeah, why don't we talk about those procedures? So, uh, what is the Barbie procedure? Okay, so the Barbie procedure is when they, um, there is no, uh, what do they do? They cut off all the excess. So, on the right hand side here, they cut off all the excess skin, um, and they basically make it look Neater. Neat. Like the end tucked in. in. Exactly. That's what you see in pornos basically. They just cut up all the excess all the excess skin yeah. mm -hmm. to make you look like you're 14 again. Okay, so that's the Barbie's procedure. The now rim. there's called the rim. And Julia, what's that? Okay, so this next photo. Well, you can see that they are cutting out a wedge from the labia, and that's the outer labia, right? So they cut out a wedge and like the Barbie, they're gonna tuck it so they solder and cauterize the two little hanging flaps so that there's less skin mm -hmm. but they do leave the edge of the outside so that's like the kind of um, pigmented skin it's still not perfectly tucked in and straight to the bit raggedy and that's more natural looking so that's actually the most popular procedure so you know a guy's not gonna go down there and go oh you got labiaplasty <laughs> no it's just you got a nice cute little pussy so yeah so <laughs> I guess it's kind of like you know with with your belly button there's an Indian Audi did you just say the P word love it yeah. okay that was so quick you want to buy so fast okay so it's kind of like the belly button where there's an innie and an Audi right mm -hmm. and I guess also it's kind of like with guys in relation to guys when they have um, what do you call it when they get so circumcised they, they some circumcised. leave like the foreskin yeah. and mm -hmm. some have it clean mm -hmm. right so exactly. just sort of like you guys have an idea of 
what it's like on the other side. Wait, right? wait, wait. When guys get circumcised, they leave some of the foreskin? Yeah, because apparently the foreskin is where either. there's a lot of sensation because there's so many nerve endings. No, but surely if you still have your foreskin, you're not being circumcised. No, no, no. It's kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have our friends here who are helping us out. We have a couple of guys, but no, so there's the mushroom, right? Yeah. And then some, it's like super clean. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then underneath the mushroom, right, facing... But like, <laughs> I had a dick. It's facing this way. Wait, There's like wait. a little bit of foreskin that if they actually had a penis leave. and it was facing you. If it was erect or down, if it was erect, if it was erect. Right? So There's a bit of foreskin right underneath the mushroom. Okay. Oh, okay. There's a little a tiny bit, bit of skin. Right yeah, there. a tiny bit of skin. There's a little bit of movement. There's a little bit of movement. Okay. It's it's kind of loose. It's kind of like saying there's the French cut. There's the Swedish. There's a German. Dude, it's like it's like a sausage. I'm telling what? you. What? Right? Did you do this to a little baby? Anyway, okay. So that's 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So why don't we talk about the different types of procedures <laughs> in particular, right? <laughs> we all gotta be carried away talking about penis. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so we are girls after all. But why don't we talk about the different procedures? So first and foremost, there's the labiaplasty, yeah, which is just what we were talking about. Now it's. Women that feel like they have large lips, yeah. so the flappy things, when you think of the vulva, you think of vagina, mm -hmm. that's what it is, and they want to trim it down, cut it down, get that excess skin on, like that, mm -hmm. and make it nice. That's a little bit plastic, yeah. which is the most common. Okay, so Kat, what do you think about that? Like, ex like lips, you know, like the... You know what, for me, I, I feel like vaginas, you know, they're like fingerprints. No one, not like, no two vaginas are ever going to be the same, okay? And, mm -hmm. you know, Women don't go around looking at each other's vaginas. So, you know, mm -hmm. and some women don't even look at their own vaginas. Yes, yes, yes. This exactly. is a problem nowadays, you know, is that women don't know how to love their own vaginas. Mm -hmm. Okay? You know, and it's so terrible because I feel like this is a part of your body that is the most private part yep. of your body. Most and intimate. If you don't love it. Who the heck else is going to be able to love it as much as you love your own vagina? But see, this is the thing though. A lot of girls out there, they just don't know what a normal vagina looks like. And then they turn to porn. And yes. then they think that porno is a good example or a good indicator of what a normal vagina actually looks like. When it's completely wrong. Absolutely For like Playboy, wrong. All, the, all the vaginas are actually airbrushed. Yeah, they're airbrushed. Yeah. Never know. But Absolutely. before we discuss this, maybe just quickly let's round up the other yeah. vagina procedures. Yeah, exactly. We're there's about. a couple. So there's also the hymenoplasty, okay? Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know, I am actually a single mom, right? And right when I gave birth, it's, hymenoplasty is basically when they they tighten you up again. It's kind of like bringing back the virgin in you, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. So actually, when I gave birth, my, my gynecologist was very kind enough, was very generous <laughs> enough to uh, sew me back even tighter. <laughs> because as they say, the vagina is the most elastic part of your body. I mean, mm -hmm. if it can give birth to 16 tuplets, mm -hmm. right? So it can go back to a little tiny, tiny, tiny hole, basically to tighten you up, which will add more sensation, not just for you, but also for your partner. And then there is the G-spot amplification. The G-spot amplification, my gosh, what a mouthful. <laughs> it basically what it does is they inject collagen into your G-spot to enlarge it, to heighten the capacity of orgasm. Yeah, I guess, I'm, how I understand this is maybe if the, the penis of um, a man is not maybe it doesn't hit the G spot. It makes it bigger. Yeah, it makes it. You know what's there? It's kind of like those. help. It meets you halfway, yeah. right? Yeah. It yeah. Just helps you reach out a little exactly, bit. Exactly, just a little, right? Don't push that button. Yeah. I suppose, like, if a girl doesn't, you know, because there's different types of stimulation, you can have yeah. clitoral stimulation or G spot stimulation. Yeah. So sometimes girls, if they don't have as much G spot stimulation, that could help them, I suppose, yeah, for exactly. it to be a little yeah. more pleasurable when they're actually having I, I would like to know the stats if it really does work, though, if it really does amplify It's true. Like, you know why, though, with a penis enlargement? You know how they say, oh, they make a penis enlargement, but when it is erect, it actually doesn't make a difference. Oh. So it's a little bigger like when it's down. Uh -huh. What I do it's know is, it doesn't help you at all. So really, at the end of the day, no. What I know about so penile in the locker room, they feel better. The yeah. collagen. Actually, exactly the same. It's, it's, it's effective, I guess. Yeah. Huh? But I feel that sex is 80% mental more than exactly. it is physical, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, um, especially with Filipinas, there's a lot of the guilt involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, even in Japanese pornos where they always like the scenario where they're being like attacked or raped yeah. so that it feels like, I don't really want it, but it's happening to me. I'm a yeah. virgin, don't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. right? <laughs> I happen. think I, I would think that the... Um, 
injection collagen of the G spot would be kind of like a boob job for the vagina. That's right. I don't it's know. I don't like the eye design. Well, you think about it though. It's, it's like a filler. filler. It works. It's like a filler. filler. It works it's, with it's collagen in your like, lips. Yeah, and it's more like the collagen in your lips. Yeah. yeah. More like having that done. But at the same time, that makes your lips all numb and weird and all that. It does. It does. I don't know and how there I are those. I don't trust anybody to do that to my G spot. What if it backfired on yeah, me and I never felt anything? What if it about when they say that when you get a breast enlargement, sometimes you have less sensation in your People. Wait, you know what it is though. We just don't know, as Julia was saying before. We just there's just not enough research yeah. out there mm -hmm. for us to know all the answers. So really, you know, we're just sitting here discussing, yeah. shooting, shooting in the dark like everybody else. And yeah, we are. also have the vaginal rejuvenation on top of mm -hmm. all of this, and that is pretty much what Kegel exercises do. It's just tightening up your vaginal walls so that you're tighter again. But really. You can save your money and do Kegel exercises. It's like bring your vagina exercise. to the gym, people. Yeah. Okay, okay. Sit so what do we do? Exactly. Also, like, like we could sit here now and do. Okay, ready, everybody. Do okay, everybody, the just do it in do silence. Exercises. Right? Ready? I will, I will explain, explain to you guys. Basically, Kegel exercises. For those of you who have never even heard of the word, right? Um, like me when I was pregnant. Um, a lot of the pregnant women out there. Sometimes when you laugh. You just suddenly pee and you yeah. can't control it. So what I you're know doing is, can I just quickly? Yeah. My mother has had six children, and when she <laughs>, laughs or sneezes, she lets a little bit of pee out. Yes, that she, very and she true. always reminds me: make sure you do your Kegel exercises or your pelvic floor exercises. You just in your mom out and you can, <laughs> <laughs> When she sneezes, she has to hold her, cover her nose, and hold her. It's very true because at the end of the day, that actually helps you climax yeah. even better. So it's like, bring, like, like Trisha said, bring your vagina to the gym. So how exactly do you do that? You know the feeling when you're trying to hold your pee in, like especially for example, just pretend like you're 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 sitting in toilet already, right? And then you gotta hold your try stopping your pee. Stopping your pee. Your <laughs> yeah, and it's really hard to do that, right? Because it's already down, but the flow is right there. So you try and do that of releasing and then control acting like I'm 10 times in a row right <laughs> holding in that that ladies what are you two giggling <laughs> what are you two giggling <laughs> about I so try and hold in those <laughs> muscles for like a few seconds and then releasing and then do yeah. it again you can do it in the office you can do it while crossing the we're street. doing them right wait, now wait, wait, we're doing them right now we're doing them right now we're already doing them i'm doing them been doing them yeah. and you can't tell you can't tell so it's such a natural way in actually working those muscles so that your sexual stimulation when you're actually having intercourse it is heightened yeah and it actually really helps for your men too i know uh, men are very happy customers if yeah. you really do this yeah. because it just makes it tighter yeah. do it right up here now it's actually like when it's like it's like when you're having sex and you um and you're contracting mm -hmm. and it it just makes your it tighter so basically mm -hmm. it's kind of like it gives a tighter grip on yeah. the penis right? they just feel it it's, it's just so closer. Tighter. It just hugs yeah. your man. Guys, more. can I just share? <laughs> Trisha's mom and sister have surprised her from out of town, and they're right outside the door, and we are talking about, about how she's giant and about how my <laughs> lovely love you, mom. We love you. We love you. Okay. Wait. So let's move on. Yeah. Let's move on, right? So obviously, like I said, there, like we've been talking about, it, it's kind of sad how women sort of have like this distorted self-image of not just what is external but even their vagina no, yeah. yeah that's the part that makes me sad it's like not only are we supposed to have perfect tits and a perfect like face and a perfect body but now your vagina needs to look a certain way too. you know what i love my vagina i love my vagina me too, too. Me too. i, I love, love my vagina, vagina. It's all okay, but vaginas. this is the question you guys maybe we love our vaginas because we're lucky enough to have cute little ones nothing but like wait dripping you know what but the it's normal, and it no is one normal. knows what it normal is. is. Okay, in Australia, when I was acting and dancing, and you know, I I was working as a laser technician, um, which I studied at university and at, at TAFE, sorry, not university. And I worked at a non-surgical facelift clinic where I would do procedures such as laser hair removal and IPL treatments and things like that. I, on any given day, would see maybe a good between twenty to twenty-five vaginas. And it wasn't until I started working there that, you know, because just like every, like all girls, you know, we all go through it. It's like, mm. 
am I normal? Yeah, you know? yeah. exactly. And when all my boys in the locker room where they all look at each other and it's all out there because it's kind of in between our legs. Because we have to go through someone yeah. else's life. Like, you know, oh, like oh. I have five sisters, but I still have never looked deeply into them before. So when I was working at this clinic, but anyway, I started lasering and sure it was very confronting, but I remember coming home and saying to my mom and to my sisters, do you know what? The vaginas that we see on pornos, they are not, they are like the minorities, that's yeah. 5%. So does that mean that 95% of the vaginas walking around are abnormal if we think that Porno vaginas are normal. Yeah, for myself, because I've seen so many, <laughs> because of my past job, um, I was like, wow, I'm so normal. Yeah, actually, yeah. there's this artist who does a lot of sculptures of vaginas, even in Sex and the City. Remember that that Jewish guy, that rabbi, who actually does like paintings of different vaginas, and he even asked Charlotte if he could paint her oh, vagina, sure. right? Yeah, exactly. And and basically what this what this artist was saying that people think that there's this perfect look of a vagina when technically from all the vaginas that he's ever seen for for as his subjects, there's only like five percent that you would consider like the benchmark. Yeah, exactly. It, so right? the ninety five percent Think they need labiaplasty. Think they need labiaplasty. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really, the majority. really sad. Yeah. Which is yeah. really, really sad because, you know, you guys are totally right. Okay, it stems from porn and it stems from the internet. All right, yeah. that's yeah. why people have such low vagina self esteem. <laughs> yeah. Okay, people have been watching porn for forever. Somebody was saying earlier, I think it was you, Trisha, who was saying that back in the 70s, there was 70s bush to cover all that stuff up, right? Yeah. In the pornography. There was no actual close-ups of your lips or your, you know, no. all of that stuff was not shown. It was just a bunch of hair. And yeah. right. Guys loved it back in the day, but then this whole trend of waxing yeah. and, and exposing. you know, shaving and everything, which by the way is terrible for your vagina. Can I just say? Yeah, it exposes shaving, it to the elements. Right? And then you're like a 14-year-old girl for the rest of your life. But anyway, you know, this is what happens. Women see a vagina on TV. I don't mind look, being 14. Think about it, okay? You have a job, okay? Say your hosts, your models, whatever. What is your job? To look good. Your face has to look good. Your body has to look good. A porn star, that is their job. Their vagina has to look amazing. Yes. So they invest money into their pussies so that it looks good on camera so that you'll watch them so that a penis exactly. going in and out of it doesn't look like it's being eaten by a monster. It looks yeah. like it's sexy. And they're going to do things sexy. like waxing. They're going to do things like bleaching. Anal they're going to do <laughs> things like, you know, Oh gosh, crazy, crazy things. Things that we do on our face like IPL treatments and, yeah. and microderm abrasions and things like that. I'm not gonna do that down there. But that's a thing. I think though, I mean, we're not trying to say like, don't do it. I mean, all of us have insecurities. It's a very normal thing and that's why we're discussing it right now. But the thing is, what we're trying to say is, must you really resort to that? Because if you think about it, why would these girls get it? It must mean, it must stem from like, how they think guys perceive it, Yeah, right? Okay. Mostly. I've noticed that when you read about women that have undergone labiaplasty, all their boyfriends, all their husbands think, baby, I love you anyway, why are you doing this? But yeah. for these women, they they rationalize it saying, well, it makes me feel better. I feel like a freak. Um, I watched a documentary at the BBC and Channel 4 also has done a lot covering why labiaplasty has become so popular. And one woman said she'd have nightmares every night that her lips would be choking her around the neck. Yeah, that comes down to body dysmorphia and stuff. Yeah, right, exactly. Problems. But the thing is, the surgeons are not going to turn them down. Of course not. No. Right? They see dollar signs. And no. especially what is worrying is that most of the doctors that are doing these procedures are actually gynecologists, and gynecologists are not, not surgeons. No. In yeah. Surgery. In plastic surgery. So they botch all of these. Uh, surgeries and then these poor women are left to go get another surgery to fix it and we don't even know how it affects childbirth will the stitches pop or yeah will the, what happens what now they have four labia because the the mm -hmm. baby split open these stitches yes, what's exactly. happening too is like um, for example something as simple as piercings in your clip mm -hmm. like some women are into that right mm -hmm. and I was I actually um, saw a couple of studies where one girl I mean god bless her good for her where it actually hurt a certain nerve ending that when she sits down she's like coming incessantly oh that must Lord. be so also uncomfortable like dude <laughs> so I have a life I cannot do this 24 <laughs> hours a day right but there's another one where 
where it hurt it hit a certain nerve ending and she has lost all feeling and this could also happen i mean guys you have to also not just think about the pros which are maybe yeah you feel better about yourself it looks better aesthetically but you also have to think it? yeah i mean you have to think like what if it actually hurts certain nerve endings and you'll never feel anything again it doesn't guarantee that your sexual experiences are going to be so much better it doesn't it's, just it's purely aesthetic and yeah. no one ever has better sex because their labias are small yeah it's just it looks pretty and they feel more self-confident and plus can i just point out we're all human beings here and we're made a certain way for a certain reason okay so if you're gonna go down there and change it all up for some reason something is bound to go wrong yep. plus I mean, penises aren't all that beautiful. I don't know why guys aren't going around getting their balls hyped up and made to look like they're just tight and neat and yeah, nice and I agree. I agree. You know what I'm saying? That one. Penises uh -huh. are weird shaped things Definitely. and it is all about, Definitely. right? It is, either they lean to the left, they lean to the right, sometimes they're That's a Beyonce really song. Teeny, teeny, teeny. Sometimes they're huge, balls <laughs> smell, hair, whatever. <laughs> Both smell. Yeah, yes, exactly. They, do. You know, yeah, they, they have all kinds of problems. But yet men are not running around going, oh my gosh, what if my girl doesn't like my penis yeah, like this and that and the other? And it's like, they just want to stick it in you. And you know yeah. what? Most men just want to go down on you or have sex with your vagina. Do they you really don't that? care. Well, I think most guys are just happy knowing their way around a vagina, yes. let alone going, oh, well, I'm such an expert down here, and do you know that you have got really big flaps, you should really get them fixed. I'll turn around and be yeah. like, honey, you should work on how you go down on me and <laughs> keep that mouth yeah. shut. Yeah. No, but I think for me, at the end of the day, no matter, it's like, it's kind of like being a person. No matter how pretty you are, if you don't know how to, if you don't have personality, you don't have, you don't have different talents that give you a texture in, in your persona. It's kind of like, dude, you may have a pretty vagina, but if you don't know how to perform in bed, it's like, come on, right? Yeah. yeah. What, what so the it's, point in the first yeah, I mean, the, having a pretty vagina is just, it's just presentation, yep. yeah, right? But at the end of the day, it's how you use it. Exactly. exactly. What's the point in having a pretty vagina? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm don't know what to do. And yeah, there are a lot of guys also who actually say they are so turned on by women by not exactly how, what they're, I've, I've yet to hear a guy who says, oh my God, because her vagina is so pretty, but it's like how she moves. It's like, she's so confident. Like yeah. she knows how to please herself and she knows how to please me. Yeah. Actually though, what I do find sad is that I have talked I have spoken to some men about this and they actually, one of them admitted to me that, oh, you know, it's true. When guys get together, they'll be like, oh yeah, I, I they do. I, I yeah, got, I got, sure they do. I hooked up with this really beautiful, uh, hot, hot girl, but her, her, her poem was her ugly. Her was uh, um, a peach. Ugly. Like, yeah, so it's like she was hot, but downstairs not so much. So it's kind of, and that made me sad because for me it was like, I think why you and your friends would think that this girl's vagina is ugly is because of porn. You've been watching all this porn and that's what mm -hmm. you think that vaginas are supposed to look it like. It is nothing but an uneducated conversation. Which, and, exactly. And, and a respectable which, guy shouldn't even talk about that. I mean, well, I mean, guys are guys. Guys are guys. Guys are guys, guys, are guys and girls are girls. Like, yeah. We've all sat around before going, oh. <laughs> which but Actually, yeah, yeah, that's true. We're guilty of that. That's so yeah, true. That's so what so so it means is that the, it's really not blaming girls and insecurities, but it's blaming the deeper question is, what it, I guess, porn because it's affecting guys to think a, certain, a vagina should look a certain way, and then it's making girls more insecure that the yeah. vaginas don't look that. And then guys are expecting it, so it's like a, a, a it's a vicious cycle. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like with magazines as well. It's like we love looking at magazines, but at the same time we don't realize or we don't even want to accept even if we know it's true that everything is airbrushed i mean they literally yeah. like yeah. chop chop yeah. parts of different bodies and make up the most beautiful photo right you know what yeah. i do swimsuit modeling and i do not look like my swimsuit photos in real life <laughs> okay right now there is no way my thighs are that small and that my waist is that tiny so of course they do it in everything you know it's just it's sad, but it's just advertising and it's how they get people in because it's like make believe. But it's just sad that now people have been brainwashed so much to think that this make believe it's is real. real. Yeah. And it's affecting children as well. Apparently, many mothers are bringing in girls as young as 11 years old yeah. to these doctors and say, There's something wrong with my daughter's vagina. And I think that's terrible. That's terrible. Um, 
Crazy. Exactly. crazy. I think that's terrible. terrible. Way to raise your daughter's self image, my dear people. You know, yeah. way to make her feel better about herself. I think yeah. that first and foremost, you know, what happened in today's society as well is that women have such a high standard to meet in terms of how beautiful, how white, how skinny, yeah. how all of these things, how not wrinkly you have to be for to to be beautiful in today's mm -hmm. society. And this you know, is really a question of self-image. Women have to learn to love themselves no matter what. I mean, as long as you're taking care of yourself, you have a good diet, you are exercising, and you're doing everything that you can to be beautiful, yeah. and you are a good person on the inside, you shouldn't feel insecure about yourself. And if your man doesn't like your vagina, you should get a real man okay. who loves exactly. real Exactly, oh my gosh. Seriously. Yeah. You should never let a man or anybody define who you are, especially your vagina. I mean, exactly. come on, at the end of the day, it's how you view yourself, how you value yourself. If you think you're beautiful, then that's the truth. That's yeah. all that matters, right? Okay, now speaking of awareness, you know, learning about your body and all that, there are actually a couple of Tumblr sites. There are educated, educated sites that can give you really good information for people who and actually want to well. who want to know the truth. And really awareness is the only thing that is going to help people become educated and to make right choices and yeah. right decisions. It's really the only solution to this, you can't say problem, but scenario. Yes. It's not a problem. It's, it's, um, yeah. But so it is it's show outbreak. me your vagina. It's a Tumblr site, show me your vagina.com. And literally the site's been up, I think for five, over five years. And no, actually the one behind me like, is by like an artist. 2005 called, at least. Um, I think Jamie McCartney. And this is um, a sculpture of w real women's Vaginas, vagina. or plastic, what you call it, mold. Yeah. They're mold. So this this is, actual, is not showing um, your vagina, vagina. Molds, but this is an actual mold. Yeah. Different These are molds, actually yeah. um, women who have had their vaginas um, molded with um, plaster, and that's it. But if plaster. you take a look, think about how many hanging lips. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like it 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 <laughs> it is kind of pretty much like DNA, like no two vaginas are like alike. there's like no Barbies up there. Look at yeah. it. Yeah. It's mostly like, I think yeah. there's like Remember 5% people. Yeah. 5%. And then there's the also world. another site called the Great Wall. Great this, Wall no, of Vagina. No, 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 guys. This is the Great this Wall of Vagina. Oh, this is Great Wall of Vagina. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so funny. Very cheeky. Right? Yeah. Great Wall of Vagina. Yeah. Strengthen those vaginal walls. Yeah. <laughs> so I think basically our message today is just love your vagina and if you do feel the need to to do such a procedure such as this make sure it's an educated choice and a choice that you do for yourself we're not saying to those women out there who have had this procedure done that you're a terrible person no. and that your self-esteem is so low and that what are you doing and we're just saying to the people who haven't had this procedure done and who are thinking about it to think about it in a in a different mindset as well and to the women who have had it done i hope it was I hope you're happy. Yeah. I yeah. hope you're happy. I think one of the things about plastic surgery or whatever kind of surgery you have is sometimes I know of some people they regret it not because it didn't come out well, but they couldn't handle people talking about it. They're like, oh my god, she got that done. So if you guys are going to actually do something like that, which is more controversial than let's say getting your boobs done or getting whatever in your face, you also have to uh, you also have to prepare yourself for the consequences that you know people find out people will talk how are you going to respond to that will you be able to take it because at the end of the day there may have been physical damage but it's going to be cured yep. can you take the psychological effects that come with it also another psychological effect of having any kind of plastic surgery is that your mind has to adjust to what it looks like i mean it might be a little bit easier because you don't look at your vagina all the time but like if you get a nose job there is trauma there is yeah. shock from yeah. having a change in your appearance and so even if you do get this done, don't assume that it'll fix your problems and make you feel better. Exactly. It could actually make you feel worse yeah. at yeah. the end of it, you know? Yeah. So, you know, more often than not, if your vagina works well, if you're not grossly misshapen, you know, from birth, or if, if you, unless of course you have a child yep. and you know, it rips everything up down there and you want to have it done, mm. fair enough, yeah. absolutely yeah. fine. You know what I mean? But in terms of if you're just a little bit insecure about your vagina, cause you got a little bit of skin hanging out, honey, if before you think about spending loads of money on changing the way your vagina looks because somebody told you at one point in time you have a funny looking vagina, go and look at a bunch of normal vaginas and then see if you're... Yeah, go squat definitely. over a mirror, okay? I bet you there's a whole bunch of people watching who have never looked no, at a yeah, vagina. Look yeah. at your own vagina. Check it out because honestly, it's taboo. No, your mom doesn't tell you, oh, 
look at your vagina. We're just not taught this. And even in sex ed in school, you're not, you don't really learn about your own anatomy. No. Which is sad. You see a little cartoon and you're like, oh, that's weird looking. Like, yeah, they feel like, just don't know. Yeah. They feel like if you don't talk about it, it's like, uh, it's kind of like sex. Oh, if you don't talk about it, it won't happen. Exactly. And then just, the norm is really so broad. A labia can go anywhere from five millimeters to six centimeters. Yeah. That's like times a ten, right? So I just kind of think to myself, you know, in Africa, there's so much vaginal um, mutilation oh, happening. Mutilation. And then we're here in the first world kind of trying to cut up trying, our vaginas for yeah. 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 You kind of have to think to yourself, I mean, this is the mindset of us. We just kind of, this is these, and these are our opinions, you know. Um, take them or leave them, but at the end of the day, I think that there are other things that people can be spending their money on. Yeah. Um, I just that what's happening in Africa with you know people that they cut out the clitoris so that there's no sexual stimulation, just so that yeah. the baby. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so terrible. terrible. So okay. I don't know. Just you just think to yourself, where does it stop? Yeah. I agree, and but this is our opinions, and obviously, you know, we don't want to preach to you, and we do want. Okay, what I'm trying to say is there are women out there that have gotten this done and they're very happy. There yep. are. There are. You know, they say that they feel more self-confident, they feel like they can have sex, that they can have start new relationships. So just be educated and check out your vagina. That's a, if yes. I can just We're just that trying, look that your message, vagina. trying to spread awareness. Be, We're trying to get the information out there. Yes, and exactly. appreciate your vagina. Your vagina gives you pleasure. If you're having sex with someone and it makes you feel amazing, then appreciate it okay yeah. if the guy doesn't make you feel amazing that's that problem but it's like um that that, that song your body is a wonderland baby it Your really body is, is a wonderland. oh yeah and julia's like mm -hmm. okay <laughs> what do we have next okay. people before we round up the show oh wait 20 questions, 20 time, questions. I think. so we are going to do this with all of our guests that come onto the show mm -hmm. we okay. like to get to know the real but in so. just like a minute like really quick. Like okay. you go, okay, the point is you Ten. gotta answer these questions as quickly as you can. Okay. So go. ready. Ready. Am I ready? Can you let us get actually see here? Okay, ready? Uh, going on. Uh oh my god, Julie, I'm ready. Who's got this in? Scott Disick is uh, Khloe Kardashian's boyfriend slash baby daddy slash That's such a weak voice question. Well, that was so good. Okay. <laughs> Why do you hate Scott? Do, do you hate Scott Disick? No, I don't hate him. I just think he's the biggest douchebag on the planet. Why? Because he just seems like a real douchebag. You know when you just see that aura around people and he doesn't seem to treat her right if you look at their reality. He's kind of a douchey, right? He's kind of a douchey. I like his character, though. Because anyway, we're, we're not supposed to... Wait, we kind of jumped into this Scott Disick thing. There's a, there's a questionnaire that goes out to, to our guests before they come on and cats. What celebrity do you hate is Scott Disick. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It just seems like a douchebag. I can't listen to this circus music for too long. Woo! Okay. okay. What's your biggest sexual fantasy? My biggest sexual fantasy is actually being on a stage because I used to be in the theater for a, a long, long time. So it's uh, being on a stage with a bunch of people watching, but it's all dark in the theater, so you can't see the people. But I'm on stage with a spotlight on a chair with the guy. I think they have a wow. nice, nice performance. I think you could probably make it happen. In your okay, life. awesome. Do you like boobs or butt? Boobs. Uh, Englishman or Filipino man? Mixed. Okay. We did not know. Oh, like half. <laughs> Which of your close friends can you imagine living up with? Which of my close friends can I imagine living up with? I can't. It's impossible. You can't, I wouldn't be able to ask that one yeah. either. Um, do you separate your trash? Do I separate my trash? One I remember to. But there's like really difficult ones where there's like, it's like a is plastic it bag. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, what do I do with it? Plastic like, or paper? No, I know, but then there's still kind of like some ones. Still, yeah. Remnants, like, remnants. Remnant. 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 Clean the bag. Okay, so what's your favorite Oprah quote? What's my favorite Oprah quote? Oh my gosh. What episode? Our episode. I don't know, I love all of the Christmas episodes which she gives people of the stuff. My favorite thing. Oh, mm -hmm. Yes, makes me yeah. cry every yeah. single time. You're all kind of Australia! Yeah. 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 And every yeah. time she does that big voice thing, we're just like, we're doing something! Yeah. Yeah. She's like super <laughs> awesome. I love Oprah. Right. Okay, what is your favorite bed? Bad. I actually really like Foster the People, they're really good, but my recent discovery of them, but uh, yeah, let's go with them for now. Are you voting in the, this coming elections? No, I'm not. Who's your favorite? Who's my favorite MTV DJ of all time? Yes. Um, I was always a really big fan of Sarah Meyer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, would you ever go streaking? Done it. Okay, <laughs> would you ever 
ever date a guy who is 20 years older than you? It's 20 years breaker. older than me. Uh, it would depend on his maturity level, I guess. I mean, if we could get along, and it wasn't like he was 20 years older than me, but maybe. Yeah, maybe. You know, but so you would want to date an immature guy at that point. <laughs> well, some guys don't ever grow up. You know what I mean? That's no. so true. Or he could be really old, and I wouldn't understand anything he was talking about. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, he could be like, when I was an ad, and then he'd be like, no, this is not happening to me at all. It's not working. It's not working. Hey, when was the last time you cried? Uh, I cry all the time. I'm not going to be crying. Maybe. We're both cancers. Right, we're both cancers. Yeah, right, right. That happens all the time. It's really sensitive. Okay. Have you ever been in a fist fight? Almost. You've never been in a fist fight? Not a proper one. I was in a fist fight, but I was trying to stop it and I got hit in the face. So oh. technically, mm. I was in a fist fight, but almost got into my elbow with a girl. Okay, what is your favorite curse word? I mean, I still like hearing that. Do you have an English favorite curse word? Uh, Fox pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> good. Very generic, but what? Right? Yes. It's, it's like, what, what, is, what is putang, you know? Putang, you know, it's like, well, literally, it's like your mother's a hoe, right? Yeah. I mean, oh. it's like your mom's a hoe, but oh, then okay. people just say it when it's like, damn, or it's shit. It's not really because you're trying to say what it means, it's just that when you say it, there's just this satisfaction when you say it because it, it's, it's the, it's the conviction, yeah, it's right? So but it's not really what it means. Yeah, it's like no. how it rolls off your tongue. It's like a it's cold kind of down it. enough. It's like, no. It's named by one word. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's like, you know, and it just comes out like that when yeah. you're mad and it just expresses exactly how you're feeling. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, the spark. Yeah, the spark in the eyes. So yeah. irritated. Done it. Okay. Um, who's a person who makes you very happy? Person who makes me very happy. And it can't be your mom or dad. Or brothers or sisters. They don't make me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> um a person who makes me happy. Does it have to be somebody that I know? No, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway. Somebody that I see and I'm like, it oh, could be scared. Like just a happy for person. No. Um gosh, that's really um, a weird question. I don't know. The when you're getting into character for something, what's what's your happy thought? I really don't know. Okay. Catalana is just so a very happy, so happy person. Yeah, I just am. Like, yeah, it's like she's a detail. Yeah, like, yeah, she's like read into her psyche. She's just naturally like good vibes kind of person. Yeah. yeah. So do you think Josh Hartman's the your brow is really, really hot? Oh, I think he's so sexy. But what about his unibrow? The sexiest man with a unibrow ever. Yeah. If only we could close up on her face when he when when Kat was saying that with that nose. Oh, look at that. She is ready. Josh Hartman. Josh Hartman. Oh my okay, god. Okay, can I tell you why Josh Hartman? Why? Because when I was 14 years old, I watched Pearl Harbor, and that scene with him and, uh, what's her name? I know. Oh, Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale, Kate Beckinsale oh. in the parachutes, uh. and they're having sex. That's what I first had, my, my first, like, tingle, like, oh my gosh, I think that's what sexy feels like. No, I was like, I would date Kate Beckinsale. Oh my god, I would date. Oh god. In a, in an airplane hangar? In an airplane hangar? Yeah, in the little parachute. Well, thingy. Yeah, I don't know, maybe we could do the on stage thing if it was me and Josh Hartman. I'm okay. sure he'd totally be down with that. Oh my gosh. Okay, and final question of 20 questions. Would you ever get a lipoplasty? Um, honestly speaking, if I ever had kids and my vagina blew up, maybe I would. But okay. in terms of right now, am I happy with my vagina? I'm incredibly happy with my vagina. I love my vagina. I want my vagina to know, vagina, I love you. That is never happening to you. I love your vagina too, and I don't even know it. <laughs> And Julia, she also yeah. yours as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. But to all guys out there, Catalana is single and she loves her vagina. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> me out okay, so speaking show. of loving your vagina and you know promoting the beauty that it has, would you like to promote anything else before we end the show? <laughs> of course, I'm I'm here, right? Right? Oh, wow. Alano, you shot um, your latest music clip yeah. in the streets of Manila when Manila was shut down for Holy Week. Yes. Tell us about right. that. Um, we're actually going to come out with a music video very soon. And Pico's going to help us with it because he's so awesome. Yes, um, so we shot it in Tramuros. Uh, we were like doing it guerrilla style with a little tiny camera and just making sure none of the security it's guards saw us. It's that way. Who <laughs> 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 said do it again? <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the process of editing that right now it should be out in the next couple of weeks guys so and what's the song called it's called it's... impluvium oh. it's uh it's one that you wouldn't like because you like uh no i heard it when we <laughs> <went to> the <laughs> thing and i liked it 
but people implu impluvium impluvium what does impluvium mean impluvium is pretty much it's like a, because the song is symphonic it has like violins Ooh. and guitar and trumpet and all this stuff in it so it's this huge production so impluvium you know how symphonies are always called something like symphony number no. five yeah or, yeah know, yeah, all yeah, this yeah. Other stuff so it's random things we call it impluvium because impluvium means an internal implo uh, explosion which is like an implosion pretty much okay so it's like now, if you guys also want to catch like a past episode of Good Times with Mo, um, I was actually able to join Kat. We yes. sort of co-hosted the show together last Friday. Yeah, that's so right. if you guys want to check that out as well, right here on nmfnetwork.tv. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So what do we have next week, girls? We next have a week, special guest. Yes. We do. We have Cookie a sexy little in. fella coming in. Um, we have got Erwan Yusuf coming in. Um, we he actually invited us onto his webisodes to do a little cooking special. Which I him. heard that it just turned out to be more like three chicks who can't really cook. Look what? how funny they are. No. Oh my god, I can cook. Yeah, I, yeah. Erwan <laughs> Yusuf, you in so much trouble next week. If that's what the show is about, I will be totally pissed <laughs> because I made that zucchini pasta salad so well. You gave me an easy one. Okay, basically he came out also in Hot Guys Who Cook of, um, mm -hmm. on the Asian Food Channel. So basically you guys are going to know a lot more about what uh, Erwin is about and what he's cooking up. What makes him tick. All right, in and out of the kitchen. So catch us again next week. That's 8 p.m. every Sundays. Uh, the girls of 28A. So at once Beyond again, the Box Studio. at Beyond the Box at Beyond Studios, Studios. Studios. At One Rockwell. Also, you can tweet us at the girls of 28A. You can also like us on Facebook. We've got a fan page going at the moment, and we are the girls of 28A. We'll see you next week, and we are all here. All here. All here. Bye. Thanks, guys.